expected value and probability is really kind of what it sounds like, which is how many times would you expect something to happen? So for instance, if I was flipping a coin 10 times, how many times would you expect me to get ahead? And that's based on your theoretical probability, knowing that the probability of flipping a coin is a half to get ahead. So out of 10 times, I should get ahead half the time, five times. So if you know the probability of an event P, if that's our probability is just the P, and the number of trials where it could happen, that's how many times we do it, then the expected number of successes, or the expected value, is found by multiplying those two things together. So your expected value is really just n times p. The number of trials times the probability. So as an example, if you roll a die 200 times, that's n how many times we're going to try to do it. How many times did you expect to get a 5? Well, remember for rolling a die, oops, we've got our six outcomes, and getting a five is only one out of those six, so my probability is equal to one out of six. So my expected value here would be equal to 200 times one divided by six. In any calculator, if you put that in, you get 33.3 times which we can round to roughly 33. So it's not that complicated when you see expected value or things like on average maybe. Um, you're just going to take it, the probability and times it by the number of times that you test it out, the number of times that you try it. Complementary events, another thing that you might see. These are events that are kind of either or type. So for instance, you're either absent from school or you're not absent from school, right? You're either absent or present. The probability of complementary events add to one because they accommodate everything that's possible, it's either, for instance, being there or not being there. So what this sentence, what this statement here says is probability of A plus the probability of not A, that means not A, the little apostrophe there, is equal to one or is written as the probability of not A is equal to 1 minus the probability of A happening. So for instance, the probability of being absent from school is equal to 1 minus the probability of being present at school. You just take the two numbers. So here, I've got a bag full of snakes. It's very exciting. And the probability of reaching in and grabbing a poisonous snake is 0 0.15. So snakes are either poisonous or not poisonous, so it's going to be a complementary event. So if I have a 0 0.15 chance of grabbing a poisonous snake, what's the probability of grabbing a non-poisonous snake? So probability of getting a non-poisonous is going to be equal to 1 minus the probability of getting a poisonous. So that's going to be equal to 1 minus 0 0.15, which is equal to 0 0.85. So I have a 0 0.85 chance of getting a non-poisonous snake. Not that I would reach into a bag full of poisonous and non-poisonous snakes, just because I have a better chance of getting a non-poisonous snake. But you get the picture. So our last thing to look at here are mutually exclusive events. And these are basically events that cannot happen at the same time. So we often see these as or events, the word or. And in the situation where you've got or, you're going to be adding the probabilities together. So for mutually exclusive events, we can add the probability of those two things happening together. An example here would be drawing cards from a deck. I cannot pick one card and have it be both a spade and a heart. Right? Cards are either w or can only be one type of suit. They cannot be two types of suits at the same time. So these are what we call mutually exclusive events. But I could ask you the question then, if I draw one card from the deck, what is the probability that it is either a spade or a heart? So I'm looking at, I don't mind if it's a spade or if it's a heart, either way I win. 
So the probability of having a spade, roughly, or the probability of having a heart, is going to be equal to the probability of having a spade plus the probability of having a heart. And that is going to be equal to, well, 0 0.25 plus 0 0.25 is equal to 0 0.5. And if you're wondering where the 0 0.25 comes from, remember in a deck of cards, I've got four suits, hearts, spades, clubs, and diamonds. And I've got 13 of each, so that's 13 out of 52 for any of the suits. And because there's four suits and they all have equal numbers, 13 out of 52 also reduces to one quarter, which is the same as 0 0.25. So I'm saying the probability of getting a spade is 0 0.25, the probability of getting a heart is 0 0.25. And if I don't care if it's a spade or a heart, as long as it's one of them I win, my total probability of winning here is 0 0.5 because I've got a half chance of getting what I need, which is either a spade or a heart. So for mutual, mutually exclusive events, again, remember you're going to be adding them together. For complementary events, it's just 1 minus to figure out the other half of the complementary problem. And for expected values, it's going to be the number of trials times the probability.